And welcome back everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for our part three of our Throne of Eldraine Brewers set review. Uh, this is where we're going to be going over the black cards now. We have just did white and blue and we'll have red, green, and then multicolor land artifact all together after that. You can see the order up here. So this uh, Throne of Eldraine's Brewer set review is where we take a look at all 269 cards in Throne of Eldraine and give in-depth analysis of how they could be used in standard and what kind of impact they could have on the format as well. So we'll be talking uh, through all the cards here and be giving them a letter grade uh, based on uh, how much play we think that they'll see in the format. Um, for the letter grades, uh, we have A, B, C, D, and then L for limited after that. So an A is a card that we'll see a lot of standard play in multiple decks or be the defining card in a popular deck or maybe an incredibly popular sideboard card. A B is a card that we'll see a good amount of standard play in a support role, also a moderately played sideboard card. A C is a fringe standard card that used as filler for certain decks or a playable build around card. Also a narrow but still regularly used sideboard card. And then a D is a card that you'll rarely see in standard, but can fill a role for a fringe deck or is a fringe sideboard card. Okay, so that those are our ratings there. Uh, you can kind of go through uh, white and blue if you haven't. If you're watching this on YouTube, hope you check out those colors as well. Um, and I kind of go a little bit better uh, describe them on some of the other ones there too. But we're moving on along here. We're in hour three. Let's start with uh, Ayara. How are we pronouncing this? Ayara? Hmm. Ayara? I guess I, I probably pro probably should have looked at this card of like how to pronounce it. Um, but the first of Lock Lockthwain. Hmm. I really like this card. I don't really like this pronounce or like how we're supposed to pr pronounce this card. Ayara. Ayara? Yeah. Lockthwain. All right, so first of Lockthwain. Anyway, uh, this is BBB for a 2-3 legendary creature, Elf Noble. That, that's pretty cool. Ayura doesn't really look like an elf in just the art, but oh well, we'll go with it. Um, <laughs> when when Ayura uh, or another black creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses a life, you gain a life. And then plus it has tap, sacrifice another black creature, draw a card. So I absolutely love this card. This is exactly the kind of magic that I like. There are a lot of good black value creatures that I want to be playing. And some of them make me lose life. You know, like my Midnight Reapers, I got to lose life with that. So we're going to need to have some extra life. So Ira, so this card helps out with that uh, completely. Uh, triggers whenever it itself enters the um, en enters the battlefield with the lose a life, gain a life, and then plus all the other creatures. You do want to be heavy black, of course, BBB for a mana cost. That's going to be constricting, also being legendary. Um, but as, as you all know, like just a, a few days ago, we were playing like a Journey to Eternity deck that looked pretty sweet. But just but my point there is that we were playing a deck with like four Ravenous Rats or whatever the new Ravenous Rat is named. Uh, that card, and then for um, Yurok's Fen Lurker, and so you know, like playing like those kind of cards that you know are just like a, a one mana or a two mana one one that makes them discard a card. It's a you know pretty de decent uh, little card, but it's not you know it's it's sometimes hard to like trade for another card like in combat. Well, if you have like this this card that you can just sacrifice those little one ones to draw extra cards, reduce your opponent's resources, increase your resources. That's how you can pull ahead. Yeah, a burglar rat. Yeah, that's what that's what I meant to say. Burglar rat. That's definitely what I said the first time, if you heard me correctly. <laughs> but yeah, so I really like this card. Um, de definitely it looks like something that I'm going to really enjoy playing. Works really well with uh, Cavalier of Night being a three mana creature that you can get back into play with Cavalier of Night. I like that quite a bit. Uh, so now we have three really good black three drops between this Play Crafter and Midnight Reaper to have there and i guess we're going to talk later on about Min uh midnight rider uh is that the name of the card murderous rider murderous rider uh that has there'll be another good three drop so 
Black's looking pretty good on the three drop slot. Oh yeah, and Rotting Regisaur. But that Rotting Regisaur isn't really like the value type, like the mid-range value decks that like these go into. Um, so yeah, it looks like y'all really like Gutter Bones a lot. I, I mean, Gutter Bones is okay. I guess, but I mean, yeah, I guess if you have all the extra mana, yeah, you can just keep on replaying your gutter bones. So I guess that's okay. Um, yeah, yeah, we can we can gutter bones it up. We can, we'll throw our opponent a bone, I suppose. So yeah, I really like this card. This is one of my favorite black cards in the set. Favorite, one of my favorite cards in the set. Yeah, you can go Dreadhorde Invasion. Absolutely, you can be doing that. So as far as a letter grade, an A, if we think about an A, an A is a card that we'll see a lot of standard play in multiple decks. We are we are talking about a legendary BBB creature, so that's that's going to kind of narrow our choices there. I think this is going to be something, I think this is more like a B, a card that we'll see a good amount of play, standard play in a support role. Um, a B, as I had for examples, were like Voracious Hydra, Scampering Scourger. You know, like those are cards that you see uh, that see a good amount of play in a support role. I think I think we're kind of on that level there for a, a Yara. So let's go with the B. Okay, we have Bacon to a Pie. Uh, four mana, instant, destroy target creature, create a food token. Very, very good limited card. It's a common instant speed removal spell. Get you that food also. You can get a nice little treat along with it. Awesome limited card. Not for standard though, so this is just going to get an L for limited. Barrel Witches, 4 and a B, 3, 4. When it enters the battlefield, return target night card from your graveyard to your hand, and then return Barrel Witches to your limited deck, because why is it in your constructed deck? Shouldn't be. So that will be an L as well. Yeah, the flavor of food token, or the, the flavor of bacon to a pie, definitely an A. All right, Bell of the Brawl. Two and a B, a 3-2 human knight with menace. Whenever Bell of the Brawl attacks, other knights you control get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Awesome flavor again. Like, that's really cool, you know? Like, Bell of the Ball, but turn into Bell of the Brawl for the, the knight there. That's really cool. Um the knights take pride in being the last one standing in a fight or on the dance floor. That's pretty cool. So awesome flavor here. Um, I think this is still just L. Even even with like knights, like there's a lot, a lot of good knights. A three mana, three two menace. That's not really where we're at. Uh, it does pump up all your knights, so that's that's kind of cool whenever it attacks. But that's still, um, you know, like we're, we're talking about like uh, you, we can play this or. For three mana, you can have uh, Midnight Reaper. Midnight Reaper is a knight. So I'll, I'll take my Midnight Reaper. Um, yeah, I, I don't think this is going to see the light of day, so we're going to go with an L. All right, looks like y'all are a little higher on it, though, but I'm still going with an L. Uh, yes, there there is a glass slipper equipment in the set. Yes, there is, Storm. Yep. All right, we got Black Lance Paragon. All right, we got a rare here. One and a B for a 3-1 flash. When it enters the battlefield, target knight, which so it could be any knight, can target itself, gains death touch and lifelink until end of turn. This is a pretty good, pretty good little knight. Good rate. You know, 3-1 attacker for two is pretty good. You know, you don't want it running into, like, your fibble thips of the world and, and cards like that or little you know, afterlife tokens and all that kind of stuff. Like one toughness is kind of rough, but it's a really good blocker, like removal spell kind of thing, like a, a flash death touch creature, basically. I'm not, it's, yeah, it's, it's a little better. Yeah, it's, it's, it's better dire fleet poisoner in ways. Uh, one way is that it, it's never going to survive being a blocker. Like, uh, you know, sometimes you could have, um, like a 1-1 one, one land war elf that isn't going to add mana that they just attack you with your land war elf or uh, or with, um, I guess, a better example now with all these cavalcade decks, they attack you with like the little 1-1s one, and then the Dire Fleet Poisoner would be a 2-2 two, two to be able to flash in and eat it. So it's not always better, but because, um, you know, like the 3-1's not going to be able to, to trade with like the 1-1s one, there. Um, but it's it's not a bad card. But I think it's very similar to Dire Fleet Poisoner. 
Um, will this actually make the night deck? I'm not sure. I'm not sold on it. Y'all, y'all seem to be a lot more sold on this card. Um, there's a lot of good knights in the set, and I don't know if this makes a night deck. Honestly, um, it is removal. It is removal. Like that's that's what it's best. It's best at taking down big creatures. It's best at blocking questing beast, which. As we've talked about, Questing Beast is incredible. And so Questing Beast probably is going to be format warping. So this, honestly, just Questing Beast being a card, come to think of it, may mean that now you're playing a bunch of Black Lance Paragons because of how popular Questing Beast could be. So um, it's, yeah, it's like two mana, destroy any attack, like just destroy an attacking non-flying creature. So it's not destroy any creature. They have to attack with like a non-flying creature and then also not have any removal spells in response. It's also like, it's that, but then they could also have, you know, like a shock and then your Black Lands Paragon doesn't work out kind of thing. Um, plus gain three life also. All right, so it will see a good amount of standard play in a support role. That's like a B, you know, this is like Scampering Scourger level, I think. Scampering Scorger for Elementals. I think that's kind of very similar here. I could be underrating this card. I'm going to go with a B here, though. But I, th I think it's fine. You know, it's it's a good card. It'll be played in Standard. You know, I like Scampering Scorger, too. You know, it's, uh, or Voracious Hydra. You know, I think this is similar to Voracious Hydra. You know, maybe even less than that, though. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, it could... Yeah, it could yeah, Icon of Ancestry would give this plus one, plus one, or Circle of Loyalty would give this plus one, plus one as well. I'm going to go with a B. All right, Bognati. Three BB for a 3-3 three, three flyer. Two and a B, sack of food. Target creature gets minus three, minus three. All right, we got some limited cards to start off the day here for black. We'll give that one an L, move on. We got 269 cards to do. Let's move on. Cauldron Familiar enters the battlefield. Each opponent loses a life. You gain a life for a one mana, one, one cat. Sack of food, return Cauldron Familiar from your graveyard to the battlefield. Awesome flavor. Awesome flavor here. I mean, I, I really like me some cats. Um, I, yeah, it's just, it's the, uh, it's the best creature type. I agree. Cats are cool. Um, We'll go with, I would usually give this an L, but since it's a cat and cats are cool and I can do whatever I want, we'll go ahead and give it a D. That sounds good. Yeah, Hawkeye gives it an A+. Plus. Where is he at? I think, he's, I think he's laying up on the bed. I'll give it a C for cat. All right, D minus, fine. D minus, this really isn't very playable. Um, the, 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 ba the best way you could play this is if you have like a food, if you have a deck that can generate a lot of food and you want creatures to sacrifice. So maybe you're playing, all right, actually let's go with D. I could see, well, if you're playing a Sultai Oko deck with Priest of Forgotten Gods. And so, you know, like Oko is making food. And sometimes turning your foods into three threes. Sometimes you sacrifice your food to Cauldron Familiar to bring it back. Uh, you can trade. You can have Oko trade your Cauldron Familiar over to your opponent to take like one of their creatures. Also, that's something you could do. I don't know. Maybe you're doing a, a Sultai Oko Cauldron Familiar deck. It combos with Witch's Oven. All right, so I guess maybe there's some combo potentials with it. We'll see what Witch's Oven is. I don't, I don't quite remember that card. All right, so we're going with a D. All right, Cauldron of Eternity. Let me know what y'all think of this mythic here. 10 BB for a legendary artifact costs two less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. Whenever a creature you control dies, put it on the bottom of, of its owner's library. 
two and a B pay to life return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield activate this ability only anytime you could a sorcery all right so let's kind of talk about this card a little bit let's let's do that first part so it well it costs less for each creature card in your graveyard okay so we want creatures in our graveyard right like that's that's what we're doing here we want creatures in our graveyard because then this cauldron is going to cost less um and then also it's three mana tap it pay to life you do have to pay two life. That's a little rough. And then you get to raise dead a creature. So that's that's pretty nice. Um, so yeah, if we're putting creatures in our graveyard, yeah, we could be playing Glow Spore Shaman. We could be just going again with um, Elementals. I mean, Cavalier of Thorns loves this. You know, Cavalier of Thorns puts creatures in your graveyard and everything like that. It's, yeah, that middle text right there. That's, that's the one I'm worried about too, Zap, in there. The library aspect. Yeah, some other people saying they don't like the... Yeah, so it's whenever a creature you control dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. So now you're not going to be putting other creatures back into your graveyard anymore whenever your creatures are dying. So you're going to need ways to put creatures into your graveyard besides them dying. So you're going to need, like, uh, like cards we just said, Kugel Spore Shaman, Cavalier of Thorns, stuff like that, to get more creatures into your, your graveyard. Um. So that's that's kind of rough. It's I think somebody talked about like Whip of Erebos with this. Like Whip of Erebos uh, brings back a creature, and then whenever that creature dies, you exile it instead. It's kind of like that, but it's also all of your creatures. Whenever they die, you put them back on the bottom of your library, so you don't get to put any of your creatures back into your graveyard. That that part really is rough. That that really is rough. Um, I I kind of feel yeah. So some of y'all are saying. So like a spicy self mill deck, um, uh, Bond Revival seems less clunky. Um, <laughs> hey, let's give a twelve mana artifact a downside. Um, I I kind of feel like this could be good in a Sultai self elemental self mill deck with um, again with like a Cavalier Thorn elemental deck. Because then, you know, bringing back Risen Reef, you know, it's kind of like your late game Moldrotha kind of card. You know, bringing back Risen Reef, Agent of Treachery, your rock. Get those things back from your graveyard that you self-milled over. Um, it, do, it would make you want to play, you know, like that 3-1. Uh, but I, I kind of feel like that's where this card would be at its most powerful. Um, yeah, I think think that's where we're, where we're really going here. Um but I, I wish that it didn't have that second clause. If it didn't have that second clause, I think this would be a lot better. Oh, great with Tamio. Good call. Good call. Tamio. Yeah, Tamio loves this card for sure. Get those, get a bunch of creatures in your graveyard. Absolutely. That's a very good call. So yeah, like an Agent of Treachery deck. Uh, you know, if you're playing a whole bunch of Agent of Treachery, self-milling yourself with Tamio and everything. Um, yeah, so Soul Tie Reanimator. There you go. Yeah, you could mill yourself with Ashiok, but Ashiok's pretty... Like, you want your mill cards to also be good cards and, like, trade with your opponent's cards at least or, or get you other value, or Ashiok's just pretty meh. Um, yeah, you'd probably need some life gain with this. I think so, Smash. I think so. So this does pair well... This pairs really, really well with the Great Henge, which we'll talk about later, the new green legendary artifact that taps and adds two green mana and gains two life because then you only need you can tap that and then just tap one black mana and then you get to tap your cauldron and then you you cancel out the life like those two work really well together and then only cost you one mana and so again great henge is very easy to put into play after you play cavalier thorns also um so that's so that's uh Another thing, uh, we're going to kind of just find out that Cavalier Thorns just pairs well with really everything. Um, ooh, a Karn artifact list? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can you can grab, you know, it is an artifact you can grab from your sideboard with Karn. That is something that you can do. So, yeah, let's look at our grade. So, y'all are kind of saying C. That's what I'm kind of thinking. A, a fringe standard card used for certain decks or a playable build-around card. Yeah, it's a, it's a playable build-around card. That's what I'm kind of thinking here. So, like, as far as that, uh, for a... a um, example that I used from last set was like Gargos. Like if you want to make a Hydra deck with Gargos, you can do it. 
I think this is a little better than that, though. I think I want to go with like C plus. I think. Um, it's not a card that you're really going to be playing that many of. I could see it being maybe B minus even, if that turns into a popular. You know how if that turns into a popular deck, it has like some some room to kind of grow there. Um, so maybe I'll just go B minus. It's kind of B minus C plus. Um, it's basically, do I think like that kind of Soul Tide deck would be janky or do I think it would be good kind of thing? So yeah, it's, it's basically Soul Tide reanimator with this kind of stuff. Let's go B minus. It's a mythic and it's, it's really powerful. Let's go B minus. Yep. The extra copies don't do anything. That's rough. So that, that's rough. So it could de definitely be C plus also. Cauldron's Gift, five mana sorcery. You may choose target creature card in your graveyard if you do return it to the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. And then if at least three black mana was spent to cast the spell, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. So you do, you do that per, part first. So you'd like mill four and then put a creature card back in. Um, I think like this is, like we already have other good uh, cards like this. Um, you know, obviously, obviously Bond Revival is just a lot better You'd rather have haste than additional plus one plus one counter. We got blood for bones that can do some pretty crazy stuff as well. Um, actually, playing cauldron's gift is not going to be something you'd play too often. Um, yeah, there's better options than this, so we'll go ahead and and give it an L. But I I could see you maybe wanting to play one more if you really want you know a fifth effect of that. Um, Maybe. All right, we got Clack Bridge Troll. 3 BB for an 8 8 trample haste. When Clack Bridge Troll enters the battlefield, target opponent creates 301 white goat creature tokens. At the beginning of combat on your turn, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. If a player does, you tap Clack Bridge Troll, you gain 3 life, and you draw a card. All right, so this is. Um, all right, so this card, so it has Trample and Haste. So you pay it for, for five mana, your opponent gets some goats, and then immediately they have to either have you attack with an 8-8 Trample Haste or sacrifice one of the goats, and then you gain three life draw card. So you immediately get to gain three life draw card. They have two goats left, and you kind of continue on from there. Yeah, if you do play this with Hushbringer, you do get to prevent them from getting the tokens. That is true. That is true. Uh, if your opponent has, like, like basically the only way this card can kind of be bad, the only way this card can be bad is if your opponent has, like, instant speed removal ready, that they have mana up for instant speed removal. Because then at that point, you play your, your troll, they kill it immediately, and they just get three goats. That's, like, the only time it could be bad. Even if, even if they... So basically, you just have to wait for them to be tapped out or not have or no they don't have a removal spell um because then at that point this card is incredible because like you basically just like have to sacrifice the goat and then so it's basically five mana gain three life draw card and continue to do that for a couple of turns because attacking for eight is a ton of damage it does of course give your opponent the choice though so like if you are like if you are behind uh, the troll is not going to be so good if you are behind because they because at that point uh, they don't mind giving you or like at that point, sorry, at that point they don't really mind you attacking kind of thing. Like So like if, if the opponent has like a lot of life and they don't mind that you attack, not great there. Or of course, if they, they want you, if they want to get past it, they can by just tapping it. Um, if, the, if you can gain the, the three life and still be dead kind of thing. Um, but yeah, like this, this card is awesome. I, I don't think it's really that bad against aristocrats. Uh, you know, they, they do get to, gives them a sack outlet for like Dread Horde Butcher and stuff like that, but you, you are gaining life and drawing card. Like gain three life is pretty nice. Um, yeah, I mean, so yeah, you can block with the tokens, but it's it's Trample. So Trample Haste Creature 8-8 eight, eight for five mana is such an incredible rate. So I really, I'm, I'm trying to go through like some some bad parts about the card, but it's it's awesome. Like gaining, you know, gaining life, drawing cards every turn, that is really good. Um and then of course, if you get rid of the goats, then you know you are, um, you know, you're attacking for a, a lot more. 
Uh, this card's just awesome. This is a really good card. Cards that like cards that match up kind of well against this. I guess Oko turning it doesn't like if you, Oko would turn it into like a three three, which that wouldn't be great for you. Um, also, Oko I guess could turn the goats into three threes as well, like on their side. Um, if you give somebody with with that uh, cast down isn't cast downs leaving the format. Um, yeah, the white archon. It's not a card you really want to play against the white archon that turns it into a 3-3 and then all their goats are 3-3s as well. That's something you don't really want to do. But overall, this is going to be a really good card. That is true. If you have this in Rakdos, with, if you have a Mayhem Devil out, they sack their goat and then you just get to use that to ping another goat. That's that's definitely good there. Um, Yeah, like... Yeah, Murderous Rider, you don't want to, like, play this into open Murderous Rider mana, right? Like, you don't want to play it into open removal spell mana. Um, but, yeah, like, this is this is honestly pretty good. I like this card quite a bit. So, I think this is... So, in A, if we talk about an A, an A is a card that will see a lot of standard play in multiple decks. Boom. I'm right there. I'm right there with Clackbridge Troll fitting in a lot of different places. I think people may be surprised at how hard an 8-8 Trampler hits. And how much like you're just immediately like you're just always like they play it you're like ah all right you get to gain three life and draw a card and then next turn yeah go ahead gain three life draw another card again if if you don't kill it so it's um it's it's pretty good pretty good i like it i'm going with an a i think i think y'all are going to be surprised about how uh how much this card will see play kind of thing um question is is this that much better than desecrated demon desecration demon and i think i think it's i think it's very similar to desecration demon desecration demon was certainly an a um for for uh for the ratings that i'm going here an a is a card that will see a lot of standard play in multiple decks and i think that's what this card i think that's what this card is all right we got epic downfall one in a B for a sorcery exile target creature with CMC three or greater. All right, so sorcery speed removal. I do. So basically, we got better removal spell options for the most part. I do like that this hits Risen Reef plus all the bigger things. So unlike how Dispar how Risen Reef dodges a Dispark, Risen Reef doesn't dodge Epic Downfall. So that's nice. Um, and uh but it's only creatures it's not any permanent like to spark it's not instant speed it's sorcery speed i'm not really expecting this to see play but it could be kind of useful it does pair pretty well with legion's end that is true um it does pair pretty well with legion's end there uh no it, but yeah it is yeah it's a sorcery i mean i don't i don't think it's a, oh see i don't think it's as good as baffling end Because you want your, you really want you, uh, your two mana removal spell to get rid of like the early creatures. Um, I think this is, like, I don't think this will really see that much play, honestly. Because like we do have Murderous Rider in the format that's going to just be uh, a little better. But this does exile. I guess exiling Cavalier Thorns is is pretty clutch. But we're not hitting Questing Beast. You know, Questing Beast is dealing damage to us. Our, the Clackbridge Troll, the Questing Beast, like, those are coming down, doing their thing. Um, yeah, I guess I am... Yeah. I, I, Exile, Cavalier of Thorns is really clutch. So, yeah, that's true. That is true. That is pretty good. All right, so... Um, I'll go... Hmm, I was going to give this, like, a pretty bad rating, but now y'all are y'all are convincing me. I'll go maybe C plus. Filler for certain decks kind of thing. I'll go C plus. Y'all convincing me there. I think the I think Cavalier Thorns is a huge part of the format. Exiling that card for two mana. I'm in there. All right, I collector. Uh, yeah, it's mostly a sideboard card. 
Um, cause yeah, I guess, I guess there are a lot of decks it doesn't do very much again. So maybe a, a narrow, but still regularly used sideboard card. I guess that's, that's the definition of a C. So I guess this is probably just a C then. All right. So we'll go C. I think that's a very, a very good C. I collector, uh, B one, one flyer. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. If this was blue or white, it would be a little playable for just an Azorius Flyers deck, then maybe you'd want it in there as just a, a one mana one one flyer. Like that can actually be playable. In black, we're gonna give this the limited rating. I guess I Collector is a happily ever after enabler. I guess there's probably better ones. All right, Festive Funeral, five mana instant. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn where X is the number of cards in your graveyard. Five mana removal is playable in limited, but not in standard whenever it's, it's like this. Um, Nights, I think mono black and mono green will be good decks. You, yes, I believe so too. All right, Foreboding Fruit, two and a B, Sorcery. Target player draws two card, loses two life, and then adamant if at least three black mana was spent to cast the spell, create a food token. So sign and blood costs an extra mana, and if you spend all black, you get a food token. <clears throat> I don't necessarily want to just give this an L, but it's not that much better than that. I mean, I know it, it's it's worse divination. It's like divination that if you spend uh, two more mana that you gain one life. <laughs> it could see play. Yeah, so you can play this, I suppose. But it's not very good. So a, so a D... I have a list as a card that you'll rarely see in standard, but it can fill a role for a fringe deck like Scholar of the Ages. Is this even like Scholar of the Ages level? Or is this lower than that? Think about how many times you've seen Scholar of Ages in standard. I guess it's probably that. So we'll go D. We'll go D there. Yeah, I do like Notion Rain a whole lot more. All right, D minus then. <laughs> I do like Notion Rain a whole lot more. All right, well, now it's time for us to be forever young. One in a black sorcery. Put any number of target creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library. Draw a card. Okay, so forever young... I think is a little bit of a trap. Um, we have some people going L, other people going B minus. That's a pretty cool card though. Um, the good, good uh, differences there. So I think it's a little bit of a trap. So basically, you know, you do get to stack your deck so you know you're drawing gas for your next few draw steps because you're only drawing creature cards for a while, and of course, you know, it does replace itself. It is draw a card. Um, you know, we have like find for find finality. Like, find is, like, two mana, basically draw two creatures from your graveyard. This only draws one creature, but then it puts however many other creatures you want back on top of your library. The trap is you are um, you are set into drawing those creatures for your next few turns. Like, maybe that's something that you want to do. Like, maybe you put, like, three or four creatures back on top because you're like, all right, I want I need to draw this gas. And then your opponent plays some threat that those creatures don't deal with. And you're like, oh, wait a minute. Now I need to draw something else. And you're priced in for your next you know, three or four draw steps or whatever to just drawing those creatures. And you can't deal with this card. you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you order them. Uh, you know, you order them whenever you do it. You know, you put them all back on top in whatever order you want. And then you draw the card. But, uh, you know, like, let's say, let's say, you know, you like you put like you know, some 
you know, four creatures back on top, you're like whatever green deck and you put four creatures, then your opponent plays like a Lyra Dawnbringer. I know Lyra is not this form, but you know, I'm just kind of, I'm just using an example. You know, like, so they play like this, this five, five lifelink first strike flyer. We're like, wait a minute. Now all these like creatures that I just put on top while they're decent creatures, they're not going to deal with this Lyra and that Lyra is going to like kill me and I'm not going to race it kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah. And so, so that's, that can make it kind of a trap. I think where I like this the best is again with, uh, or two, two things. It's, it's good against like a, a control deck where, you know, you want all those threats and they're going to be fine. And your control decks only playing answers and they're not playing their own threats that you're not going to be able to answer and that kind of stuff. Um, it's good there. Like how somebody said here, it could be a game winning combo with Citadel. Like it there. Yep. Uh, get Bolas to Citadel, put them back on top. You know, like think uh, in historic, you know, you can put like your wild growth walkers back on top and then, and then explore creatures afterwards. Like that's awesome. So uh, yeah, great, great with, with Bolas to Citadel there. Or of course, you know, you can do it in like an, an Esper deck, put your like Basilica bell haunts and, um all that kind of stuff all those like gain life creatures you know can put them all back on top kind of thing so so that's that's definitely really good there um in and again in a soul tie elementals deck in a really late game after your risen reefs and cavalier thorns have already put a bunch of lands into play and you have a ton of mana you you know you you start with risen reef you know like your opponent's been wiping the board though you we got a ton of mana you start you know put a big elemental chain back on top start like risen reef that, which draws into another risen reef which draws into like the other cards um you know you can get a, a really good elemental chain there after you know in the late game it can be it can be awesome i think that's that's uh really what you want there uh it does work with frenzy yeah it does work with, with experimental frenzy you know you do draw a card, so whatever card you draw, you just put back into your hand that you don't get to cast, but then you, you get to play the creatures, the other ones. I mean, but I don't think you're doing that too much, but it does work there. I Yeah, the Wild Growth Walker example was for Historic. Um, but yeah, so if 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 you are playing like against a, a control deck and you want um, to get all those, those uh, elementals back, that's something you can do there. So there are there are uses for the card. Um, uh, does it work good with frenzy? I mean, you still have to, you have to spend the mana for your creatures on top of your library, but you can. Yeah, great henge is awesome. With this, uh, I mean, great henge is just an awesome card. But yeah, like great henge, just you gain you gain your life. Um, so you know you can help stay stay alive for this kind of thing. But then yeah, you play your creature. Uh, then if you have the great henge in play, then you draw cards, so you draw your next creature and you get to play that and then draw a card. And so you get to just keep on going and emptying it. So it doesn't even have to be elementals. It can be any creature type with great henge. Yeah. Great henge with forever young work. That's a, that's a combo. We'll talk about that later on. Um, but yeah, it's not a, it's, it's, it's a card that you want, like in the late game after you've already milled a, a bunch and if you really have it set up, and then if you also have like your six mana legendary artifact Bola Citadel in play, or your even more expensive legendary artifact Great Henge in play, or if you have a bunch of Risen Reefs and or a couple of Risen Reefs and you can get an elemental chain, that kind of thing. So yeah, that's it's pretty narrow. Um so I think I'm gonna go with a D here. A card you'll rarely see in standard, but it has some good can tripping potential it's like it's like a d that has potential to be a lot better you know if it turns out there is like some kind of combo with this you know later on in standard you know could it could turn into like a b like it it has a higher ceiling for sure but we'll go we'll go d plus let's just give it a plus plus mean potential all right moving on foul meyer knight uh, black for a 1-1 one, one Death Touch Knight that also has Profane Insight, 2 and a black instant adventure. You draw a card and lose a life. So it's a it's a 1-mana one 1-1 one, one Knight with Death Touch 
that you can also have that adventure of three mana draw a card lose a life i think this is a good limited card i don't think this is that good for standard one one mana for a knight creature honestly it's playable like this is a playable card um because especially whenever you have like the white knight that triggers and makes humans every time you play a knight so it's and one mana one one death touches like can can trade with stuff so it's a playable card but i think i think it's very similar to the one mana one one death touch lifelink vampire how that saw just a little bit of play um i think it's very similar there i think like this adventure that you have here for a three mana um draw a card lose a life is is not a great adventure but um you know it can get you there so if you kind of do them together you got four mana for a one one death touch draw a card lose a life i mean it's if you have the mana you might as well do it kind of thing it's not something that you're gonna like you know it's not spectacular but you know you might as well if you think about like we have as far as like if you think about vampires there's the one b one one draw a card lose a life like that's a card and we saw how like little that sees play so like if if you added two mana to that and would you give would that be worth death touch no absolutely not absolutely not um yeah limited is very good limited limited this card's awesome but constructed I, i'm gonna go with a d maybe that will be a filler for a knight deck and and specifically if you want to go more um monocolored with your knight and maybe not three color but i think there's better options for knights has better one drops like there's 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 three better one drops than this in knights um so if you're saying that knight knights need eight to twelve one drops where there's knight of the ebon legion there's um venerable knight for white and then there's fervent champion i think for red so both white black and red all have better one drops for this but maybe if you're not going three color and so on all right giant skewer one in a black artifact equipment equipped creature gets plus two plus one whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a creature create a food token and then it also has equip three i think this is a good card to put down for the limited rating all right lash of thorns is a black instant target creature gets plus two plus one and gains death touch until end of turn um so like this card that's that's honestly a good pump spell as far as pump spells go like you know not really you know pump spells aren't usually constructed playable that's a really good trick. It's a really good limited trick. Um, plus two, plus one, and death touch for one mana. Like they've they've been making these cards a little better. That's good. Uh, could you play this with feather? Maybe. If you want to go Mardu feather. Maybe, and then start having your creatures gain death touch, and you put it back in your hand. That's a pretty big hoop that I'm jumping through to try to find a way to play this, but. Uh, you want to play this with like your your burglar rats and stuff like that. I don't know, but I'm gonna give it a limited rating. But you know, it's it's a powerful limited card. Hey Don. All right, Lock Twain Paladin, three and a B, three two menace. If at least three black mana was spent to cast the spell, Lock Twain Paladin enters the battlefield with a one one counter. So you can get a four mana, four, three menace. We'll go limited rating there. Lost Legion is a spirit knight. That's a two, three, enters the battlefield, scry two. Also limited rating for me. But like these are, you know, this just fills out your limited knight decks. Two mana, two, two, human noble for malev malevolent, malevolent noble. I'm getting there. You can pay to sacrifice an artifact or another creature and put a counter on a malevolent noble. I think I'm just sticking with the limited rating here for these cards. Good, good common, you know, good common creatures. You'll be playing those in limited. Not really standard though. 
Memory theft. Two and a B sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land target from it. Um, that player discards that card. You may put a card that that has an adventure that player owns from exile into that player's graveyard. Okay. So we have a three mana discard effect. So it's Thought Erasure that costs three instead of two. And instead of surveilling one, um, then instead of surveilling one, if they have an adventure creature in exile, you get to put that in their graveyard. Adventure would have to be really, really popular for this to see play. And even then, probably not. It would have to be really popular. I'm still just going to go L. There. All right, what about Murderous Knight? 1 BB for a Zombie Knight. It's a 2 3 lifelink whenever Murderous Rider, or Murderous Rider, whenever Murderous Rider dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. And it also has Swift End. 1 BB instant destroy target creature or planeswalker. You lose 2 life. I think this may be our first A plus card. We've had A's. I think this one's an A plus. Yep, A plus. See a lot of play, no question. I think so. There's two th two things about this card that people are kind of overlooking a little bit. It's obviously a great card. You know, you get the swift end, you get the removal spell, and then you're playing the rider later, right? So you're you're basically never playing this rider on turn three. You shouldn't. You should just wait with Swift End. You know, like, this is Bedevil. Um, but the thing is, is this is Bedevil that does make you lose two life. I think people are kind of underrating that lose two life. Like, that that does hurt. Like, you know, when you're, when you're playing a control deck and you're behind, you're trying to stabilize, you use a removal spell, you lose that two life. That can definitely hurt with your ability to stabilize. Because uh, then, you know, you maybe in that kind of deck, maybe you don't get to the Murderous Rider kind of thing um and you know like a blue black control deck or something i think like when people are talking about this card like sorry solomon i'm going to point point you out right there but you said hero's downfall with a life linking body that goes back into the library but it's hero's downfall that loot that costs you two life i think that i think that really is a downside like that is something that hurts that people aren't really uh pointing out at all i'm giving this an a plus okay so i'm i'm not saying this won't see play i'm just saying the don't overlook that two life kind of thing. Um, no, memory theft is nowhere near as good as duress. One mana is miles better than three mana. So, okay, so that's so that uh, I'm just saying that two life hurts, and that's that's not nothing. And then, uh, but then, yeah, you you of course get to bedevil, and then you have your your two three life linker. Um, the fact that whenever it dies, you go to the bottom of your owner's library, I would kind of rather have it in the graveyard for all the reanimate shenanigans that we have in the set. And then, you know, your Cavalier of Night that could bring it back and just have another 2-3 lifelink in play at different times. But, you know, uh, if you have, like, your shuffle effects, which there are a good amount of shuffle effects, you can shuffle that back up and maybe draw it again with the swift end there. But, yeah, this is an A+. plus. This card will see lots and lots and lots of play everywhere. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's slotted into control. Um, yep, for sure. For sure. It's just a good card. It's a great card. Is the destroy not exile important? Yes, it is important because there's times like where you don't want to destroy Cavalier Thorns. I know that's, that's the card that I always use for examples, but I'm telling you that would be an important card, but yes. Yeah. You don't really want to destroy Cavalier Thorns. You'd rather exile. Um, there's other creatures like that, but that's just kind of how it is. I mean, it's still like a removal spell that you'll play. It matches up really well with Questing Beast. You can kill Questing Beast on the draw. That's definitely important. Um, you know, you need instant speed removal for creatures like Questing Beast. And so I think Murderous Rite is going to be, Rider is going to be an important aspect of that. Um... But yeah, uh, yeah, this just does, does so much more than murder. Killing, destroying planeswalkers is really important with you know this war, the spark format. You know, killing Nissa, killing Tamio, killing your Chandras, all the stuff like that. Garuk. 
Um, I, yeah, as far as contempt, you know, contempt costing, it's similar to contempt, but contempt, you know, you get to costing four mana instead of three. I, I think it's very similar to, but you know, I think kind of like comparing it to Bedevil, but easier to cast Bedevil that can get, go lots of places. Just an A plus. Very good. All right, yeah, let's, let's move on to Oath Sworn Knight. One BB. Hey, Ru hey Ron. Uh, I don't know what my week one deck will be. I'll be building my week one decks on, on uh, Tuesday. And But yeah, we're, we're doing a 12-hour stream on Thursday for, for day one. Oath Sworn Knight. This is very important. Or just the fact that the Murderous Rider is a knight. Um, so it's a three mana, four, four. And then, but it's also kind of better than a three mana four four because it's it's a zero zero that has four counters on it. So if you have like Oko that can turn your creature into a three three, you can you can make this a seven seven with Oko. Uh, Archon makes this a seven seven, and so on. All right. Anyway, uh, it attacks each combat if able. That's not great. If damage would be dealt to Oath Sworn Knight while it has a 1-1 counter on it, prevent that damage and remove a 1-1 counter from it. So it's pretty good against like the red decks, right? Because like if a red deck tries, if it deals damage to this, all you do is just remove a 1-1 counter. So uh, you know, a removal spell instead of killing it turns it from a 4-4 to a 3-3. And then you know you block and then it goes from a 3-3 to a 2-2. Uh, it does have to attack each combat. That's kind of annoying. I think it's kind of at its best against red. Even though they can just, you know, not attack into it, wait, have, then you have to attack kind of thing. Um, that part's not great, but it's hard. It's, you know, the red deck has to use a few cards and stuff to to deal with it. I mean, you get to block with it the turn you play it. Um, but yeah, not not too excited about it. Uh, today's just the set review. Yeah, we're, we're already four hours in and we're on black we're not quite halfway through our set review so yeah i i kind of agree with you there telster it looks better than it is um it's not it's pretty narrow it is a knight so like that part is nice but there's a lot of good knights i would be kind of surprised if this card sees a good amount of standard play honestly i, I would be surprised at that the if it didn't if it if it didn't have that middle clause, if it was just ETB with four 1-1 counters and then the damage would be dealt to it, remove a 1-1 counter, I think I think it would be playable. But the fact that it has that middle clause, and like if your opponent plays a Yurok, then you just have to attack your knight into the Yurok. I don't like it. So I'm thinking this is... Uh, Probably like a D, probably like a Dungeon Geist type D. Just a card that will rarely see any standard play. I guess we'll go with the D. Great art, cool card. Soul Diviner Draw Enabler, I suppose. But that's that's something I didn't consider. That's true. All right, we got Order of Midnight. <clears throat> 1B Flyer that can't block, but then you can also Alter Fate. 1B Return Target Creature Card from your graveyard to your hand. I don't like this card. Um, I feel I feel like this is kind of like a flying Grave Digger, and like we're not really playing Grave Digger in Standard. I know you could just play it on turn two to be a two two flyer that's kind of where i like it the most honestly is just the two mana two two flyer and then i guess i think this is one that you're not just holding on to this for the adventure i think you're just kind of slamming this on two, turn two to get like that aggressive flyer down there and then if if you are in the late game and you have you know you draw it in the late game then you can spend your uh mana for alter fate also it is a knight but there are a lot of good knights like just because it's a knight doesn't mean it's played because you're only playing 60 cards in a knight deck. So again, just because it's a knight doesn't mean we're playing it in standard. Um, so I, th I think that, 
I think that's where I like it as like the two mana two two flyer, um, which is which is reasonable. Like that's that's an okay card. Uh, you know, we had we've had like two mana two two flyers that don't see play at all, but it has that and it can't block. Like that's that's rough. That you know you, you not blocking not being able to block is that's not an upside. You know, like that that really is a downside. Of course, uh, anytime you're behind at all, if you can't win a race. If you, creature can't block like that that really hurts um you know if you think of i mean this is a little unfair because it's a, a dinosaur but we just had a, we just had a red white and it's a two color dinosaur but there was just a red a, i can't and now I've, I've been trying to think of this card's name but uh oh yeah to yeah okay yeah you have to that's a two three flyer that can block nobody plays that uh, Sky Terror, thank you. We just had Sky Terror. There was a 2-2 flyer with Menace. Um, people don't really play that. So, like, I mean, sure, you, we have the Alter Fate part that can, you know, so you get Grave Digger, but nobody plays Grave Digger. So it's like, you, you're like, okay, so you can play a 2-2 flyer. People don't play those. Uh, in, you know, except for in dedicated flyer decks, of course. But you, so it's like you can play this card that people don't really play. Or in the late game, you can play this you get this other card that people still don't really play very much. You ha it's better than like either one because you have the options, but then it's also it can't block. So I don't like that that uh, can't block uh, kind of thing. But so you know, um, so yeah, I'm not I'm not very big on this card. I'm gonna go with a D here also. All right, Piper of the Swarm. One in a B, one three. Rats you control have menace. One B, tap, create a one one black rat creature token. And two BB, tap, sacrifice three rats. Gain control of target creature. So this is this is pretty cool. All right, so let's look at it like the floor. We got a two mana one three. All right, so two mana one three. Obviously, it's not a very aggressive card. Um, but you know, it's, it's something that can block, uh, you know, you kind of think of like your Takali honor guard body there, your auger of Bolos, you know, it's just, it's your two mana one three. So, you know, it's, it, it can sit there on the battlefield. Now your opponent can just kill it with removal happens. And, or if they don't, you can sit back and you can spend two mana to make one ones. Um, that's honestly kind of strong. You know, think about like um Adanto the first fort, which is just three mana make one ones. But obviously that's a land. Um obviously that's a lot stronger because that doesn't die to sweepers like like this would die to like a sweeper also kind of thing. And it's your land, but um but yeah you get you get one mana one ones with menace. Um so you know like that's that's something you can do. You can make like some chump blockers, stuff like that. But then but then you also have if you if it gets to sit out there and you get to do that, then you have four mana, sack your three rats, and gain control of a creature. Now, that is pretty powerful, of course. So your opponent's probably going to be targeting using their removal to target your Piper of the Swarm because they don't want you just to be able to to gain, to gain uh, do that. So, you know, it's it's a it's a two-mana 1-3 that kind of has a lightning rod on it. Um, and... Uh, Works well just with other stuff in the in the format also. You know, like if we're talking about playing that, you know, that could be a two drop that you want to play with a Yara where, you know, you make, you spend two, you make a, a rat that where they lose a life, you gain a lap. <laughs> Gosh, I'm sorry. I've been talking so much. Lose a life and you gain a life. And then you can sack the rat to draw a card. So, you know, you can, you can, you know, you can do stuff like that. You can use it with it's a, a slow way. What's up, Oni? A slow way to uh, give yourself some Priest of Forgotten God food there. Um, but yeah, so it's it doesn't have too much of a downside of just being a two mana one three. You know, it doesn't. That's that's not a great card. You know, you're not playing two mana one threes, but it's a two mana one three that if it sits out on the battlefield and the game goes long, it gives you a really good mana sink um to to grind your opponent down so that's kind of what it is you have to you have to kind of understand uh 
it's floor, it's ceiling, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, there, there are specific better cards for, for Priest, sure. Absolutely, I agree. It's not like an aggressive Priest card. It's just kind of like a, a slow, a, a slow kind of more like a Yaira card, but it's, it's just like a, a slow uh, two drop that can get you stuff over time. Is that great? Eh, it's not spectacular. I think I want to go with like um, a C here. I like Piper of the Swarm. I'll play some Piper of the Swarm. <laughs> Solid against the odds with a D. I like that. It's pretty good. All right, maybe C minus. We'll go C minus. I mean, I think, I think you, you can do worse than play Piper of the Swarm. C minus. All right, Rankle Master of Pranks. 2BB33 three, three, Flying Haste. When it deals combat damage to a player, choose any number. All right, so it has haste. So you want to play this card when your opponent's tapped out. They don't have a flying blocker. You just spend four mana, boom, hit them for three, and then you get to choose any number. So it's not just choose one. You can choose however many you want. You can do all three of these. You can just do one of them. It's it's your choice. So it's it's kind of Planeswalker-esque in that Matt in that manner where you get to choose like what what you wanted like what modes you want to do but you get to use every mode if you want um you get to you know uh each player discards a card each player loses one life and draws a card each player sacrifices a creature all right so the modes if you choose them the modes always happen from top to bottom so if you want to choose all three you do each player discards a card first so like if you don't have any cards in hand your opponent has a card in hand you can make them discard. You don't have to worry about discarding kind of thing. And so you do the discard part first and then uh, lose a life draw card uh, for the next part. So, you know, if, if you need your opponent to lose that life, there you go. Or, you know, if you want, if you're looking for an extra card, there you go also. And then of course that each player sacrifices a creature. I think that part is really key and that that's what could really make Rankle good. I really like that each player sacrifices a creature. I mean. I'm I'm really liking this card again in like a mono black deck with um you know with like burglar rats, your rocks fen lurker. I think like this is a really good four drop for that kind of thing. Like your play crafter deck. Uh, you know, have this on four, you know, again have like the sacrifice to different creatures. If your opponent just has like you know, if, if they just have like one creature, like they just played Risen Reef on turn three, you play this, you can hit them. You know, make them, you know, basically use it as a four mana removal spell. You know, like that's just like something that could happen. But again, like if, if we got Rankle out there, we got Piper of the Swarm, we make a rat, we both sacrifice. I'm just saying like that's something we could do kind of thing. Um, and yeah, three, three flying haste for four. And, and the thing is, is you get the options. If you don't want to sacrifice creatures, you don't have to. If it's good for you too, you get to. If you don't want to have the discard, you don't have to. Again, um, you can. Uh, you know, like that discard effect can work really well again with like those those like burglar rats and stuff like that. Um, I'm really liking a, a black mid range deck with with those kind of cards. You know, burglar rats, Urox Fenlurker, that Araya or whatever that we had earlier, um, Rankle, Playcrafter, Midnight Reaper, uh, Cavalier of Night, get stuff back. I'm really liking that kind of deck. Um, or you know, also you know you can make it Orzov and play four mana Soren. Same kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, just just black mid-range, good stuff. That's that's definitely a deck I'm going to be making at the beginning of the format. But yeah, this is this is a pretty solid card. Uh, just four mana, three three flying haste. Good good rate, and then uh, everything up here is everything here is upside. You know, you kind of read like each player discards a card. You know, I'm discarding a card. I'm losing life. I'm sacrificing a creature. This doesn't sound like upside, but this is all upside because you get to choose if you want to do it or not. Okay, so that being said, um, I kind of like, yeah, Up and Adam says a B plus or A minus. That's what I'm kind of thinking here too. Um, yeah, it doesn't get the, yeah, if you attack a Planeswalker, you don't get these effects, right? Yeah, if you just want to like take out a Planeswalker, but you're also just spending a you're also getting like your haste flyer that takes out a planeswalker but so that's still pretty good rankle is le legendary so you know we're not playing like multiple rankles back to back 
we are legendary here. Um, I kind of think I kind of think a B, like maybe vor voracious hydro level, good amount of standard play in a support role, maybe a little bit more. We'll go B plus. I like B plus. That's my favorite rating to give anyway. It's a good card. B plus. Yeah, feather deck will still likely be viable. I think so. Yeah, it also is a rogue for the rogue for robber, or the robber of the rich. Yeah, it's a it's a rogue for robber of the rich. Correct. Reaper of the night, seven mana four five. Whenever it attacks, defending player has two or fewer cards in hand. It gains flying, and four mana sorcery with harvest fear. Opponent discards two cards. Given this one an L for limited, but yeah, artwork is awesome. Cool card here. Like it quite a bit. Hey, Alchemist, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime support there. I really appreciate that. It's our ninth sub of the day. Thank you very much there. All right, Reef Soul. Um, Oh, did I, I named the blue set review white on YouTube. I did, didn't I? I even typed that out. I didn't copy paste that. Type that out. I was just, you know, just finished the the white review also. But yeah, thank you. All right, change that. Yeah, at least it wasn't all numbers. I'm I'm getting closer. Maybe next time we'll get it right. Um. All right, Reeve Soul, this thing won't see very much standard play. Uh, if you won a removal spell against aggro, a two-mana removal spell, sorcery speed removal spell that, against aggro, uh, you can play it. We have Legion's End in the format, uh, where Legion's End is going to be a whole lot better than this card, except for the... Uh, oh, it is it is power, not CMC three or less. So it is power three or less. So I guess you can play it there. It can kill your rock. It can kill Golos. Yeah, we I don't we have a lot better removal. Let's just go with an L here. Move on. Revenge of Ravens. Three and a B enchantment. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses one life and you gain a life. So you have to spend four mana for this effect for just a, a one um a one damage ping or you could play like oath of kaya and you get to kill something and you get two damage ping and it costs less i don't think this, this is just not a playable card l how do they have, like these two cards are like the same card aren't they these look like the same card pretty sure they're the same card. Okay. I guess so it is so it's per creature, so you want this as an anti aggro cyborg card, so they attack with like four creatures, then it triggers four times. It costs four mana. Wouldn't you rather just play like a sweeper? Yeah. Okay, uh Smitten Swordmaster. 1B21. I mean just yeah, it cancels out. So you can spend four mana to cancel out the cavalcade. There you, you can spend four mana to cancel out their two mana enchantment, I, I suppose. Uh let's talk about the we'll do curry favor first. B sorcery, you gain X life and each opponent loses X life, where X is the number of knights you control. That's pretty powerful. That's pretty powerful. Um, and then it has one B as a two, one lifelink. That's fine. So yeah. So, all right. So does our knight deck want this two drop? So we can, uh, if we're going wide with our knights and we have like, let's say we have three knights in play, uh, then you can play this and they, uh, you gain three, they lose three. And then you can play a two, one, uh, lifelink knight. I mean, if you have like six knights in play, you get to do six. Um, 
y'all think this is a staple and go white knight aggro decks i don't i don't know maybe i maybe i'm under rating just the gain life lose life um like how easy it is to just to have a whole bunch of knights in play i mean maybe i'm underrating that maybe it's really easy to have a whole bunch of knights in play we don't really have things that make knight tokens as far as i know of um and there are a lot of good two drop knights like i don't i don't love it like if i'm putting a you know three color knight deck together again some of these black knights it's like if you want to play mono black knights like they'll be playable but if we're going to like with like mardu knights to support like the mardu land and, and everything like we we got better options that we'll find um so yeah i could yeah like the legendary artifact you spend four mana to make knight tokens so keep on doing that for a while and after like five turns then you play this thing and boom you got them um so yeah i'm not i'm not very big on this card i'm gonna just go with a d it's not unplayable yeah i'm not saying that's I'm not giving it an L for unplayable, but I'm going to go with the D here. All right, Spectre's Shriek. B, Sorcery, target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a non-land card from it. If you do, that player exiles that card. Um, if a non-black card is exiled this way, then you have to exile another card from your hand. All right, so it's this is an awesome, awesome discard spell against black decks. Uh, you know, it's it's exile. It's one mana any black card this card is amazing against black decks it's not that great against non-black because uh, you do have to get rid of another card in your hand so it's it's kind of like force force of will kind of get rid of another exile another card from your hand there um i do think that i do think black is going to be a really popular color in standard you know you have like your legions ends and your uh, like black just has tons and tons of good cards so um i think this is just could just be a really popular sideboard card kind of thing uh i have veil of summer is like an a type card i is this veil of summer good it doesn't like you know draw a card and replace it's not you know cryptic command one mana cryptic command which veil of summer is i th think it's a little worse than that i i guess i'm kind of writing this as like an a minus kind of thing because yeah, it's it is it's Thoughtseize that exiles against mono black. Um, but yeah, it's it is really good there in Black Mirrors. Y'all are kind of saying B B plus. Yeah, it does exile, which is nice. And the thing is, you can choose non-black cards. You just have to get rid of another card in your hand. That's a big downside you know two for one in yourself so you not only two you not only two for one yourself but you also spend mana and your opponent doesn't spend any mana like the thing about like a force of will that two for ones yourselves but gets rid of something important is your opponent like spends the mana and spends the the tempo the time to like cast like the spell your opponent doesn't have to spend any mana they don't have to spend any spell you're just getting rid of the card from their hand and two for one in yourself it's pretty rough it's pretty rough um, something's got to be really important to do that. Yeah, if you are playing a discard mirror, how much do you want the card? I don't know. I'm gonna give it a B plus. We're gonna I'm gonna drop it down from A minus to B plus. Yeah, duress is gonna be more gonna hit more things. But this this hits all like the black multicolor cards as far as creatures go. It's like your rock. Um, I guess. You know, I guess it depends on how popular mono black mid range is and how popular like Knight of the Ebon Legion and all that kind of stuff is, but you're not really even trading up on mana there. I'm starting to get kind of talked down on it. Yeah, it could just be one mana look at their hand. You don't have to choose a card from it. One mana look at their hand is not really worth a card, but I mean you can do that. All right, we're dropping it down to B. Fine. It's like B is like devout decree. 
for Cyborg. I could see it. Yeah, I'd see it's probably closer to Vow Decree than Veil of Summer. Does Exile Murderous Rider. Yep, lots of Murderous Riders running around. Exiles it for good. All right, Sir Conrad the Grim. Five mana, five, four. Whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad deals one damage to each opponent. Okay, so like let's say you have this in play and you play Cavalier of Thorns and you reveal three creatures and you put three creatures in your graveyard. This would trigger three times, correct? I don't think this is, yeah, I don't think this is a knight card. Like, you're not putting this in a knight deck. Yeah, so it would trigger, like, three times there. Um, this is really, like, a self-mill card. You know, if you want to have this in your deck with a cauldron, like, a, you know, our, our like, Sultai self-mill with, like, Cauldron of Eternity. I'm, I'm not even sure if it's good enough for it. It's just, like, this is where it could go. But, you know, like, then Cauldron of Eternity can pay three to put this back into play. So you can put this into play. And then uh, this this helps fuel your Cauldron of Eternity. Uh, where how we're talking about how, like, whenever creatures die, they go to the bottom. And that's a bummer. Where the, this can get more creatures into your graveyard for the Cauldron. Um, and then also just whenever the creature leaves the graveyard. So whenever you put something into play with Cauldron, it triggers. If you put a creature into the graveyard, it triggers. Um so that's like where it could work. But yeah, 5 CMC for this. When we're talking about at 5 CMC for a deck like that, we're talking about Cavalier of Thorns, obviously, but then also Cavalier of Night and uh, Doom Whisperer and things like that. Are we really playing the Sir Conrad? I think that I'd be more interested in this is if, if it gained life, if it like dealt the damage and gained a life. You know, now we're talking because now we can start canceling out the damage that the cauldron's doing kind of thing i think in a deck like that the gain life may be more important than the deal damage um so so yeah great so i'm um so yeah, I mean, it is a five mana creature. I'm just kind of talking about like how we could maybe use this, but I don't really expect it to see uh, use and that kind of stuff. I'm thinking like a D here, you know, like Scholar of the Ages kind of level uh, of play. Let's go with a D here for the Sir Conrad. It's not completely unplayable. Okay, Tempting Witch. Uh, three mana, one three. When it ETBs, you make a food and you sack a food to have an opponent lose three life. It's a target player. You can make yourself lose three life. That's an L. All right, four mana, Wicked Guardian. Four mana, four two. When it enters the battlefield, you may have it deal two damage to another creature you control. If you do, draw a card. This is a limited card as well. And you could play it with Ripjaw Raptor in Historic. All right, Wish Claw Talisman. This card has a lot going for it. All right, so one in a B artifact. When it, it enters with three wish counters on it, it doesn't enter tapped. It's just, you know, so it enters like that, and you can, you can pay one, tap it, remove a wish counter from the talisman, search your library for a card, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Then an opponent gains control of Wish Claw Talisman, and you can activate that only during your turn. All right, so the, the obvious things, yeah, so A plus. Yes, yeah, so the obvious things are wanting to bounce it, right? It's Demonic Tutor. You can Demonic Tutor for your bounce spell. Um, you could you could put this card with uh, Teferi, but that means that you have to put Teferi into your deck because, uh, you know, you can you can play this with, with Teferi, you play Teferi, you you know, your Teferi bounces your Wish Claw Talisman back to your hand, you draw a card. But, of course, you know, you do have to, to put it with, with Teferi, and, you know, how much do you really want to put Teferis in your deck? I don't know. That's that's not a card that people really play. Um, yeah. So, not sure if you really want to be playing a card that, you know, 
Teferi makes better. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, other cards that work well. Yeah, four mana Karn, of course, shutting down the Talismans. Your opponents don't get to use it. Um, scheming symmetry with this with Ashiok. I don't know. You, you give this back to your opponent. Or, like, your opponent gets to use this. I'm not sure about that. Um, somebody said Soul Diviner. That's that's pretty interesting. I like the Soul Diviner. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Um, but, yeah, you can go get your, your Brazen, uh, whatever it is, Brazen uh, Borrower, your Brazen Borrower, and then, you know, uh, use your your... Uh, adventure part of brazen borrower and put the talisman back into your hand if you can just keep you know you can keep on like tutoring up bounce spells and keep bouncing it back to your hand kind of thing so it's like a it's like a late game card in that effect oh it's because your opponent can't search with ashiok so that's why that's why it works with ashiok gotcha okay that makes sense that makes sense there um Tristani, Tristani does not work. Tristani only works with creatures, not artifacts. If you turn this into a creature with Karn, with four mana Karn, you can be like, ha, now you can't use it and I get it back kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I was saying, Thunderwonk. You can, like, for four mana, you, you play this on two, but later on for four mana, you can pay one, go get your three mana Teferi, play three mana Teferi, bounce this back, and then you have Teferi in play. That's definitely something you can do. So there's there's neat little party tricks like that you can do, but then you're like, okay, now we just drew a card. Um, we didn't affect the battlefield at all. Did, did our opponent have like any creature in play that they just then attack to fairy? And then um, I guess I I guess I still have my talisman in hand and I'm up a card at that point and gain some life of them attacking to fairy. So that you're like up there, but you just kind of spun your wheels a little bit. Um. But yeah, like so there's there's some things there. Um that yeah, so basically you want to use it with bounce spells, Karn, Teferi, Ashiok, I suppose, but they just don't get to use it anymore. Um but then whenever they kill Ashiok, then they get to use it. Uh, obviously if you if you're playing a combo deck, it could work there. Like maybe you don't even care if your opponent searches for a card. If you go and and uh uh, find your combo piece. Um, you know, maybe the game just kind of ends. Who knows? Uh, you know, like, um, you know, playing this like in, like if if this was like a card in Nexus, for example. Like whenever you have Wilderness Reclamation in play, you have lots of mana. You can just Talisman, tap, go go grab a Nexus. You know, like maybe because if you're taking infinite turns, it doesn't matter. You know, like you go find, you know, you draw another talisman. You just use that to go grab another nexus. And, you know, like basically your talismans are just nexuses at that point because you can only activate during your turn. Who cares if you give it to the opponent if they don't get another turn kind of thing. Uh, is it playable in vintage? Po possibly. Cheap artifacts like this are usually playable. So possibly. I'm not not exactly sure. But possibly. Um, yeah, so basically this card is, is kind of a, a janky build around card, but I, I don't expect it to be like a, a tier one kind of card, but maybe, but maybe I mean, the fact that it works so well with Teferi, you never know. Uh, as per mana base isn't great, um, but you never know. So, uh, for moving on, I think we're going to go ahead and go a, maybe a playable build around card. Let's give it a C. That sounds like a good rating for me. Playable build around card. And then we got Witch's Vengeance. Three mana creatures of uh, creatures of the creature type of your choice get minus three, minus three until end of turn. I like how it says get minus three. It's like they're rewarded minus three, minus three. Um so this card should see a lot of standard play. Uh if knights are if knights are big. Boom. Great re removal spell here. Uh, I really like this card against elementals. Um, as uh, 
as a card, you know, like Cry the Carnarium against Elementals, the problem was, is it would kill Risen Reef, but not kill Leafkin Druid. You get to take out Leafkin Druid and Risen Reef and all the Nyssa lands. So that's really nice there. I know Ritual of Soot's one more mana, um, but still. Uh, you get all the zombie tokens from Field of the Dead. You get that also. Black has a lot of good uh, cards now in those in that vein between Legion's End, Cry of the Carnarium, Ritual of Soot, which is Vengeance. You can kill small creatures pretty easily, and you can kind of swap them in and out depending on how you want them. But yeah, I think, I think this was basically a card made to kind of make sure the Knight deck wasn't super powerful, I guess, or like... You know, it's a, it's a cyborg card for that, and also for elementals. And um, who knows? Could you use this with Oko? Does does Oko turn all the, like the creatures into like elks or something? Where's Oko? <laughs> it does turn them into elks. Wow, I was kind of making that up, but I guess that is what it is. I was kind of saying that sarcastically. I mean. But actually, they actually are elks. So yeah, you could you can make a bunch of elks with Oko, and then say elk, just get them. So that's something you could do. Um, but yeah, so I think this will be see a good amount of standard play in a support role. I think that's that's kind of where we are. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and, and go with a B here for Witch's Vengeance. I like this card. I think it's gonna. I think it's a. A playable card for sure and a support role there pretty com it could be a common cyborg card um yeah let's just go with the b okay so there we go that's black uh let's kind of look through our ratings here and um see what what cards that we gave like the best rating see if we can get the top five um so we went with a b for witch's vengeance um, let's see which ones we gave like B or higher. I gave B to it. Spectral sh Shriek. Uh, let's see B plus for Rankle. Kind of like Witch's Vengeance here more than that. A plus Murderous Rider. I mean, a Murderous Rider is the number one card here in Black. Um, Clack Clack Bridge Troll. I gave an A. Y'all were lower on that card than I am. We'll see if I'm wrong about that card. I gave that one an A. B for Blacklands Paragon. B for a, a Yara. A Yara. All right, so I think my fi top five, I'm going to go Murderous Rider number one, then Clack Bridge Troll, then Rankle, then uh, Witch's Vengeance, then a Yara here. Those are going to be my top five cards for Black. <laughs> Okay, all right, so uh, if you're watching later on YouTube, obviously don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. I always say that. But then please leave some comments too. Let me know what you thought of uh, this set review, you know, like what you're thinking about, it. what cards am I lower on or higher on than you are, uh, did I miss anything, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, feel free to let me know what your top five cards are. Um, but that's it here for our third part of the Throne of Eldraine constructed set review so uh thank you so much for watching and click on over there to red that's what we have up next i'll see you for the next video